Hi folks, uh, so the question we're going to be doing today guys is from page 156 of your workbook if you have it at home, if not I'll still be sending on the question to you anyway in the link. Okay, so what you're going to be doing again today guys, we're still just going to do a bit of recap on this topic before we get on to kind of the more heavy stuff on the topic next week, okay? But uh, what you're, we're going to be doing today guys is question 5 and then after that guys in your own class on Friday uh, when we're not meeting you're going to be doing question 6 on your own, okay? But I'm going to take you through the both of them now and I'm going to do them as examples as well. So question 5, it says draw the given figure and complete the rectangle as shown. So we've obviously got the image here and we've got a rectangle here, A up to, well we can see here it's going to A1 but the rectangle is here like that, okay? And what we have to do then is uh, find the image of the given figure under, under the following transformations. So A, from A to A1 by translation. So what they're asking us to do is from A to A1 by translation. Translation is like when basically the image just moves along the train track parallel to the distance A to A1. Okay. Then we want to go from A1 to A2 by axial symmetry. So it's basically it'll be up here and then it's just going to flip over. And then the last one from A2 to A3 uh, by central symmetry to, to the point Z, it's basically going to flip over again and invert, okay? So that's the idea there, guys. So I'm going to get that started there now, okay? And uh, I'll get the, I'm just going to speed up the video and get that drawn, okay? And then I'll stop the video again. Right folks, uh, so as you can see there, I have the problem kind of set up there. So this point here is known as A, this one up here is A1, then we have A2 here, and then A3 up here, okay? Now just on the object there, I was just having it in in a marker, uh, going around the curve with the marker, I kind of butchered that, but you get the idea anyway, okay? Um, so the first one is we have to do a translation from A to A1, okay? So what that means is essentially we are going from A to A1 like it's on a set of train tracks, okay? And train tracks run parallel to one another. So what we do is, uh, first of all, we have to define the distinguishing points on this, okay? Technically, a center point, that definitely 100% will be a distinguishing point, okay? So I'm going to bring, the, bring that up parallel. Now, what you'll have noticed on the setup of the question, this angle down here is at 30 degrees, Okay, so that means just using my set square, don't have to do any sliding set squares here, it's nice and handy, 30 degrees, okay, and I could technically, now I've kind of lost it there a little bit in the marker, but I'm hoping it's about up there, could bring up that one, and technically I could bring up this one as well, this one's probably a little bit better, okay, and what that does is, I have A1, which is A, and it's just moved to A1, and technically, this point here, because I know it's on a straight line, I know it's just going to be over here as well, okay? But if I wanted to prove that, I could as well, okay? If I wanted to prove that, and the way to do it, and usually when you're doing translation, especially when you kind of get to higher level, okay? What you would do is you take the distance, and hopefully my compass reaches it now and it does. You take the distance from A to A1. Let's make sure you get the exact distance there. All right, just slipped a little bit. Just make sure I get the exact distance, A to A1, and if I want to define this one, hopefully, depending on my accuracy, yeah, and that's pretty close, okay, and you can see it goes through it right there, okay, and it'll be the same then for the center, okay, and then it will be the same for this. However, we don't always need to do that for every single point, because a lot of the points share the same kind of geometry. So from the center here, we can see that that one literally just went straight up and down, that's where we're going to do our arc of the circle, okay? So as you can see here, I'm going to have another little semicircle here, and this point here is going to connect down. So I'm just going to speed up the video there once again, and that's the translation done. Okay. 
as you can see there guys just a little bit out on the accuracy okay so just kind of fill that in there a little bit but you get the idea okay shouldn't be switching between the marker and the pen really I'd say now the next part guys anyway is from A1 to A2 okay and what we have to do that is we have to do axial symmetry so it's basically taking this image okay like it is like that and flipping it over on the opposite side okay so all we're going to do there is a little bit of axial symmetry where we take the distance from one side and we map it over on the opposite so a1 to a2 is already done so now it's literally a case of i'm going to take that line there okay because that is where basically everything else of this object is on so just to mark it out and see how accurate it was this one is probably already found so that one there right there should be down here and we can see that's perfect and then the next one is going to be where the center is which was right there okay and I would mark that out so I take this distance and I'm doing the axial symmetry on the line x y and I mark it out the opposite side and that's all it is I have now found the center so once again I am basically going to draw in my semi circle and then map it down okay so I'll speed up the video there once again guys okay and there we go guys that is i'll just move the camera up a slight bit there so you can see it a bit better okay that is basically when we've done axial symmetry from a1 to a2 okay that we flipped it over like that now the very very last one we have to do okay is where we are going to do central symmetry from a2 to a3 okay and central symmetry goes through the point z so as i said we've already found a3 because a2 to a3 is done so what they did was from z to a2 they took that distance on their compass and you've marked it out the opposite side this distance here is the same as this distance here so other points that i have to find that are very important okay would be this one and this one okay so first of all i'll just find this one so it's going to mark it out the opposite side goes through z and the next one i'm going to use is the center okay and it's going to go out there okay now just to prove that to you and we'll find that okay if I wanted to find this point here, chances are, I'd imagine if I follow the line over, that's going to be the point right there, okay? Right there is going to be the point, but I want to prove it. So what I'm gonna do is put my point on Z, take that distance there, and hopefully, depending on my accuracy, that's actually not bad, marked it out there. Now what I'm gonna do is the same for the center. Okay, and mark it up here. And there we go okay now chances are because this line is running perpendicular okay to this line here it should be running perpendicular from here as well and depending on my accuracy we'll see that's actually not bad i've corrected this out as it's gone along okay and basically our circle it's like basically it's flipped over again only this time instead of this being on this side it's going to be here okay it's flipped over and inverted okay so once again guys i'm just going to speed up the video there and complete that part of the question now as well Okay, there we go guys, that is transformation geometry where we did a translation from A to A1, uh, A to A1 a translation, A1 to A2 by axial symmetry in the line XY, and then A2 to A3 uh, by central symmetry through the point Z, okay? What you have to understand guys is everything came about and how you'd actually see where the answer was, was A2 to here roughly, or A2 to the center. Because once I found this point here, over here on this side i knew then that the curve had to go that way okay because obviously i found the center up here then i knew the curve was there because a was on this side okay so that's basically the question done there guys try and get that done as quick as possible okay and then you'll have another question to do for friday's class as well okay best of luck with that Hi folks, so the question we have in front of us here today guys, uh, for Friday single class guys, is another um, transformation geometry question, okay? The image we're given is a little bit more complicated this time, I'm just going to show you it here, it's on page 156 of your Understanding Graphics Technical Books, okay, or Understanding Technical Graphics, 
and you can see it's down here at the bottom of the page okay so it says draw the given figure and locate the image uh, points a1 a2 and a3 and then find the image under the following transformation geometries okay so our, our transformations um, from a to a1 by translation so from a to a1 by translation from a1 to a2 by an axial symmetry so a1 to a2 by axial symmetry in the line a joining to a3 so we're just flipping it across that middle line there okay and then central symmetry from a2 to a3 so a2 to a3 in the point z okay and that's basically it there guys all right now just on basically getting this okay so it's obviously a circle radius 25 once you get a a over to a3 is 150 millimeters um then what you have is just to get this little bit here it's a radius 25 circle okay uh, down here this line here is going down at 60 degrees this line here is going up at 60 degrees you can see it there okay and then these lines connecting here are going up at an angle of 30 degrees and then down at an angle of 30 degrees okay and if you see that line there down at 60 cuts it at that side and this line going up here 60 cuts it at this side that's how you get this little portion here like this pizza slice okay so if i just go to the question there uh, you can see I've kind of done there now and it's ready to go so as you see there guys uh, we have uh, like the pizza slice bit up here angle in here was 30 degrees angle here was 30 degrees just to show you that there let's do it properly so 30 degrees there and then it was 30 degrees going down and then from A here it was going up at an angle of 60 degrees okay so you can see it went up at 60 degrees over here and then it went down at 60 degrees over here okay very very simple uh, radius 25 circle so the very very first one what we have to do guys is a uh, translation from a to a1 okay so essentially all we're doing is we're taking this this guy here and we're moving him up along the train tracks okay so very very simple guys all we're going to do is at a it's already a radius 25 circle so I'm literally just going to put in that guys a radius 25 circle so I can take the radius straight from it right there I'll take that radius there I'll come up to A1 I might as well draw in the circle now remember I know my red lines are coming out heavy guys but this is a construction circle okay just remember that oh, just hitting off the visualizer there guys so that is a construction circle and now what I also have to do is I have a line running across parallel or sorry straight horizontal across my page not parallel horizontal across my page okay very very simple okay and technically if I'm accurate if I'm accurate okay just to find a couple of the points okay obviously I need to find this point this point this point and this point to be able to complete it okay chances are I've already found this one and this one but just to prove it they should go up at this angle here parallel from the line A to A1 at an angle of 60 degrees okay so depending on my accuracy we'll see how accurate I am I'm pretty close and then come down here once again 60 degrees uh, t square is kind of slipping there there we go 60 degrees okay that worked out fine and now what i want to do is i want to find this point and this point up at the very very top so it's literally just a case of i don't know guys rejecting that up there okay 60 degrees that way and then the other one was going obviously at 60 degrees the other way so I know it was just going at 60 degrees that way so that one's quite handy as well all right and just to prove it that would have gone on okay 60 degrees yeah we can see it would have met up with it okay so it's going to heavy in that bit there now guys so I'm going to speed up the video there once again There we go guys that is a translation from a to a1 okay now generally as i said the way you usually do a translation is okay is you take the distance okay you run parallel to a to a1 okay so you run up parallel to it, it was all going at 60 degrees and then you take the distance from a to a1 and you would mark it off from every one of the distinctive points and we can see that one matches up there this one probably match up here it does and so on okay they all match up as we can see right there they're all matching up on the points okay and that's how you'd actually find the points it's just obviously sometimes the image it kind of helps us out in the way that it's designed 
Now what we have to do is we have to go from A1 to A2 by axial symmetry in the line A to A3. So A to A3 is our axis line, okay, that's our axis line, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this and flip it over. Very, very simple, okay. First of all, what I would always do though, is straight away I would take my radius once again from A, sorry, just move that back up, from the circle, which is a radius 25, just going to transfer it down here, might as well draw it in while I'm at it. Remember, construction circle. Okay, there's my construction circle. And now what I have to do is, chances are I have a line running across the middle, make my life a bit easier. And now it's a case of figuring this bit here, the pizza slice, does he go here or is he going to go down here? And if you think of it, it's flipped over, so chances are it's going to go down here, okay? But what we have to do is just prove where that is, okay? So technically, all I would do is just grab my other set screwed up this point here to make my life a bit easier you know it's at an angle of 60 degrees but once I transfer that down that should be there this one should be down here somewhere okay and depending on my accuracy it's probably a little bit out there but literally that is my pizza slice right there like that okay once again i'm going to heavy that in guys so i'm going to speed up the video there once again hey folks there we go so translation done axial symmetry done okay we made our life a little bit easier based off the shape that we did okay the center point here is very very important now the very very last one is we have to do a central symmetry through a point z okay from a2 to a3 now i do not have the point z yet so what i often have to do guys and sometimes you have to do this they won't always give it to you you're going to have to locate it okay and generally how we locate it is you just simply have to bisect the line from a2 to a3 so when we're bisecting our line Pick a distance bigger than halfway, so I'm going to assume that's just roughly bigger than halfway there. Two arcs, same distance on the compass. There we go. And now I want to find Z. There's my Z. Okay, and now at this point, once again, I'm going to put in my mock up circle. Okay, my construction circle. Should take it from the very very start one that was probably the most accurate it's close enough is the center point which is always helpful okay now essentially what's going to happen is it's going to be flipped and inverted okay so what i want to do now this time it is probably a little bit more different these two points are going to help me out okay i'm going to find them Okay, just get my compass, and the circle is going to kind of guide us. Chances are, I'd imagine it should be here, and then another one should be over here, just to prove it. So this should go through Z, and then hit here. And we'll see how accurate we are. Um, pretty close. Okay, that's that one. Then this one should be out at the opposite side, I'd imagine. Okay, and chances are, that should connect over there. Yeah, it's all seems to be working out quite well. Okay, so essentially this bottom circle here has just flipped over and now it's at the bottom here. Okay, it was up in the top down here uh, at this position, now it's at the bottom, okay? And now the same thing with the pizza slice. I'm going to bring him through Z. And chances are he's right there. And the same at this point here. And... Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, through Z. There we go. Okay, and chances are he's right there and there. Now that a lot of that will come down to my accuracy and we'll see in a second how accurate I was, okay? So just to prove it, I go Z down to this point. You see that distance I've taken there. And what I could do is I could mark it out the opposite side. Let's see how close I am. Okay, you can see there I'm touch out. I was thinking that one was a little bit off. And then the same with this one. You should probably go with the compass guys, it's probably a little bit more accurate. And then the same with this one, and you can see there, I'm a little bit off there as well. That actually looks a lot better. So you can see I'm off it a little bit when the circle should be on it, okay? 
And you can see my accuracy is a little bit out. Now, at times when that happens, guys, it often happens. I don't like these questions at times. It often happens with circles. Um, you might be out a little bit, but what the examiner wants to see is that you can do the constructions accurately, okay? Or con the constructions in the right method accurately, as best you can. Okay, if you're out a little bit, it doesn't matter. What you do is you'd make it look right to the best of your ability, okay? So you can see there now I've put in the pizza slice. At this point here, it's just a case of heavying in the final bit of detail, okay? So I'm just going to speed up the video there now on that part. Okay, there we go, guys. Uh, that is the question completed. Um, little kind of bit of a trickier one when you're working with circles and getting the exact points for kind of a shape that has probably a couple more definite uh, points in it rather than just a continuous circle okay um hope you could follow that guys there there was a translation then axial symmetry a lot of this stuff though was quite easy to do because a lot of it just married over with itself okay but try and get this question done there now guys in friday's class done as well okay so and we'll t tip on next week then we'll probably move on to rotations okay so best of luck with that guys